Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about the different statuses that files under version control and files that aren't under version control can show up as. Now first, we're going to take a look on how we can view the status of a particular file or directory in the command line. So let's go ahead, open up our command prompt. Let's navigate into our command command line one folder, which is in users slash Brian Zek slash desktop slash command line one. Okay, if we take a look, we add our regular directory. Now the first thing to note as far as looking up the statuses of files on your working copy through the command line, the command to look up the status is SVN and it's the SVN utility and it's the command status or the status command. And if you if I do that right now, you notice nothing shows up. And that's because there is nothing to show. Everything in our working copy is the same as it was when we did our last update from the repository. So SVN isn't going to show you anything that isn't changed or there, if there isn't any type of modification from the working co from the repository we updated on the working copy, it's not going to show you anything. So let's go ahead and CD into our trunk folder. And let's create a directory. So make directory, we'll call this directory 1. Now when I do SVN status, Directory 1 is going to show up, and it's going to show up with a question mark. As you can see here, Directory 1 is the item, and it's a question mark. And what a question mark means, with the as far as the status is concerned, is that this particular file or directory is inside a working copy. However, this particular item is not on the repository, or wasn't on the repository when we last did an update. So it's telling me that my Directory 1 is not in the repository. It wasn't when we did our last update from the repository. Now let me go ahead and I'm going to cd into this directory. And I'm going to create a file. I'm going to create a few files actually. Notepad, we'll say file 1 1.txt. And we want to create it and we'll just have file 1 1. Save that. Let's go ahead and create file 2-1, or 2-2. Click yes, and this is file 2-2. Save that. So now if I go ahead and do an SVN status again, oh, you cannot perform the SVN status inside a directory that is not under version control because there is no, there's no, um, it's not a working copy, so there is nothing to check. So we'd actually want to go back one directory. If I do SVN status, it still has that directory one. And the reason it only has the directory one is because, again, directory one isn't actually inside our repository, so it doesn't really know, it doesn't care or know about anything inside of directory one as far as the SVN status is concerned. So what I want to do is I want to do SVN add. And let's go ahead and let's add that directory. Oh, directory one. And you notice it added the directory and it added all the files below it. And you notice how it has an A next to it. And if I do SVN status, it's going to go ahead and display the same exact thing that the SVN add, do, add does. And basically, A is letting us know that this particular directory is going to be added when we next commit our change. And it also lets us know that these two files, file 1-1 and file 2-2, are also going to be added. So if I go ahead and do an SVN update, and then an SVN commit, and let's go ahead and this is username1, user1 is the username, and the password is password1. And we can just say adding directory one and files. Go ahead, close this, save. And now we've successfully added those, and if I were to go ahead and go do SVN status, it should return nothing because we are at the, the latest revision. Now if I go ahead, cd back to directories, and I go into my command line two folder, and then go into trunk. and we go ahead and take a look at what's inside here. We notice we have our file one, so what we need to do is we need to do an SVN update to get those new files in that new directory. Go ahead, um, 
dir, take a look at the directory. Let's go inside our directory. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and modify file one, dash one. So go ahead and notepad file one, dash one. And we're just going to update this file. Updated. Close that. And then we're going to trigger a delete for the file 2-2 when we next do our commit. So we're going to do SVN commit, or SVN, SVN delete. And then we want to delete file 2-2. So now when I do an SVN status again on this directory, we have our two files, file 1-1 and file 2-2. Next to file 1-1 is M, and that's letting us know that this particular file has been modified since our last update. And then this lets us know that when we next commit that this particular file, file 2-2, is going to be deleted. Let's go ahead and do an SVN update, and then an SVN commit. And we're going to commit this as user1, or user2. And then password is password2. And we're just going to say updating files. Close this and save. And that's been committed. We can go ahead and go back into our command line, command line 1 folder. Go into trunk. Let's do an SVN update. And as you can see, it deleted the file and updated. And if we can just cd into our directory now. And let's go ahead and open up this particular, the file that's still left, which is file 1-1. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to modify this again. We're going to put moose. And basically what we're going to do here is we're going to create a conflict so we can show you what the SVN status is going to look like when there's a conflict in place. So we did that, saved that. We're going to do an SVN update. Oh, spelled update wrong. And then we're going to do an SVN commit. And commit this as user1. And just say an updating files. Go ahead, close, and save. If we go back into our command line 2 folder, and we want to go into our trunk, and then we want to go into our directory 1, okay, we're going to go ahead and open up this file in Notepad, and again we're opening it up without updating first because we want to be able to trigger that conflict. I'm going to go ahead. Dash, uh, dash duck, save that. We're going to do our SVN update. And okay, we've got our conflict, so let's go ahead, hit P, postpone that. And notice file 1 1 has a C next to it, that stands for conflict, and we've updated to revision 8. So now if I were to take a look at our directory, we have those three files, those three additional files, including the conflicted file. And if I go ahead and do an SVN status on this directory, you notice now we have those three files that were created have those question mark, and that's because those files are not being stored in version control. That's something that SVN just created for us. And then the file1.txt has a C next to it, and that stands that this file is currently in a conflicted status. So if we will want to, if we want to go ahead and just commit my changes and overwrite what are what any other changes happened, we can go ahead and do. We can erase our files that we don't that we don't need anymore, which is the file one one text and then the file one one revision files, which is dot r seven and dot r eight. If we take a look at our directory, we now have that file one one text dot mine. If we were to do an SVN status again, we have another new status, which is the exclamation mark. And basically, that what that means is that there's a particular file that is being stored under version control that is no longer in your directory. So it's, it's letting you know that this particular file is missing. So what we need to do is we can go ahead, rename file one dot the mine file, and rename that to file one dot one dot text. Take a look at the status again. 
you notice now the status is M, which means it's been modified. And then we can do an SVN update, and then an SVN commit, and commit this as user2. So it's user2, and then the password is password2. There we go, that looks good. Oh, I did something wrong. Oh, spelled password wrong. There we go. And updating files. Close that and save. And as you can see, if we take a look at SVN status, oh, SVN status, it shows nothing because it's in a working state. And let's just go ahead and, for good measure, just update our command line one, just so that this is up to date for us and both folders are matching. As you can see, it updated our file1.txt. So this is the brief overview of using the SVN status and it goes over most of the most of the different statuses that show up, or at least the more common statuses statuses that are going to show up when taking a look at the statuses of your files. So we can go ahead and close command line. Now with Tortoise SVN, instead of having those statuses, this is what these little icons in the lower left hand corner of the folders and files are for. And this green check mark just means that everything's simple everything's current with what the working with the uh, repository that the working copy was last updated to. So let's go into here. If we go into file one, let's go ahead and create that directory we created in the command line, which is directory one. We go ahead there, and notice how everything still stays the same because we haven't actually done anything to to require it to change to that red exclamation point. Go into here. Let's go ahead and oh, let's go ahead and. Okay, hold on a second. Make sure you guys see this. Uh, we want to add a new text file. And it's just going to be file 1 1. Go ahead, copy and paste that. And let's just rename this to file 2 2. Put in the actual file 1 1. Save that. And let's go in here and put file 2 2 and save that. Go up a directory. So now we have our. Let's move that over. We have the same structure we created in our command line. If we go ahead and right click and we do an SVN commit, we have these three files. We can just check on these. Actually, before we do that, let's actually go in here and let's do an SVN, a tortoise SVN, and let's add. And it's going to add in. Our directory including the files of course if we didn't want to we could just add in the directory but we do want to include everything click OK so notice that it's now been added and you can see that this icon has now changed to the red exclamation point and that's letting us know that there is a change on our working copy that differs from what we updated from when we updated and you notice now we have that plus icon that blue plus icon on the directory in the files and that's the indicator that these files are going to be added when we next commit. So I go ahead, right click, I commit. You notice the text status is added. I can just say adding directory and files. Click OK. And we want to authenticate as user1. And let's go ahead and it's password1. I'm not going to save. Update those. If we go ahead and open up Tortoise2, and we do a right click we can update and as you can see it's updated adding the directories and adding those and you can see the action was added let's go in head in here go to directory right click on this file 2.2 file we're gonna go ahead and delete it and again with deleting files all it's going to do is just remove the file from your computer but we have that red exclamation point noting that there is a change and then we're gonna go inside here and just do oh. okay little lag there just updated go ahead and save close that now we have a red exclamation point for this file because that's different 
can go ahead and commit. And we've got the deleted, which is checked because we marked it for deletion. We can just say updating files. And this is going to be user2 password2. Go ahead, click OK. And then if we go back into Tortoise 1, we can update. OK. And if we go ahead into our trunk, and let's go make a modification to this file. Because the last thing we want to take a look at is what it looks like when we have a conflict. So we can add moose. Save that. Let's go ahead and commit. And we're just updating files again. And we're at the tortoise one folder, so we use the password one authentication. Save that. We can close this. Let's go ahead and open up this. Let's go ahead. We're just going to open up this file. There we go. And this is going to be duck. Save this. Now we're going to want to do an update. Oh going to want to update this file and we're going to have a conflict now. As you can see we have that conflict and as you can see when there's a conflict both the folder and the file that's in, that's in the conflicted status are going to have an exclamation point with a triangle yellow behind it and that's the signifier that there's a conflict in a file. So you can go ahead and delete those files Let's go ahead and rename this. So we're going to just push our changes overwrite in any other changes that may have been made. We're going to commit. Updating files. And we're going to commit this as user2. Click OK. And there you go. Go ahead inside here. Obviously the Again, like I said, the, the little icons, there we go. It, sometimes it takes a little while for it to refresh properly. But as you can see, it's now a green check mark, and that means everything's all set. So this shows you how to take a look and see what the status of your files are for both the command line and Tortoise SVN. Thanks.